Anthony on Air Podcast. Frankie C is here with us for another episode. How you doing, my man? Doing all right. Another day. Another day, another dollar. We got a mishmash of a podcast today. There's no real one main topic. We got a bunch of uh, fun little things to talk about. Uh, but to recap last episode, have you changed your mind at all? People really enjoyed the last episode. If you missed it, we'll link it on Facebook and YouTube. Um, actually, just YouTube. Uh, but you can just go back in your feed. Make sure you're subscribed on the podcast, by the way. Uh, that's the easiest way. It just pops right on your phone, whether you got got uh, an Apple or an Android phone. Um, would you rather live a long, prosperous, healthy life? as a normal person, or would you rather live as a celebrity for seven years and then die? You are on the long prosperous life and are, have you changed your mind at all? Why would I, it doesn't make any sense. One guy had Why such a great mind? comment. I wish I could give him credit, but he was like, is Ron Jeremy a celebrity? <laughs> I thought that was hysterical. I think we're talking cream of the crop, tippy top celebrity life. I'm not, I don't think we're talking D list to kind of, you know, we're talking a list. Nothing but positive stuff about you. Yeah, well, you're we were living the life. We were talking more like Jordan, Taylor Swift, like endless money, huge. Yeah, you know, accolades, Just opportunity after opportunity, islands, the whole deal. Right, sunsets, parties, whatever you want, whenever you want. You're still not changing your uh, tone. No. All right. Negative. All right. Why would I? That's uh, so dumb. Seven years. That's nothing. I just want to say that it was not planned that Frank and I were going to be wearing sports attire today, but I am sporting an Islanders shirt and he a uh, Mets shirt. That's a cool shirt, too. Yeah, you know what? It's And this is not sponsored, but it's a Verizon shirt. Oh, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't even remember where I got it. I think I got it for like either signing up for something or I don't even know. There was a time was in my free. life where I was signing up for every friggin' credit card just to get a t-shirt or a squeezy stress ball or some yep. stupid thing. I did it for a crappy, it was a Mets glove. It was an actual glove, like a baseball glove. And, uh, it was, you know, it was like cheap. It was a regular glove, but it was like made out of like plastic or something. Yeah. But it was cool looking. I was like, yeah, I'll sign up for that. Now my <laughs> credit card has Mets on it since like 2000. <laughs> you still have, do you still have the same credit card? Are you still still using the same credit card? The same company. I mean, the cards changed over the years, but it's the same, you know. But was it from, still, was it from that from specific that, yeah. event that you signed up for? Yes. yes. <laughs> Which just goes Absolutely. to show that it works. Every time it you works. walk... Yeah, you walk past and you go, why are they doing this? It's so stupid. Because it, they got a customer for 25 years out of Frank. <laughs> I'm in 20 years so far. <laughs> That's hysterical. Um, so, a bunch of stuff to talk about. I want to get into this YouTuber, though, this uh, Funk Turkey. Great name. What? Funk Turkey is the kid's name. And uh, he's been doing this really cool thing for a little while now. I first caught his ACDC uh, video. And now he's done with Metallica and Frank's an Uber Metallica fan. So what this kid does is he goes to this uh, website. Uh, let me get it here because I want to make sure I get this right. Lyrics.rip. So if you go to lyrics.rip, what they do is they and you put in like an artist like Metallica. They will sh spit out a whole lyric, a whole song's worth of lyrics based off of past songs so they basically look at all the lyrics from the metallica you know archives just mash them up into a and a just new song. spits out a new song and then so what this kid does is, is he takes it and then he puts music to it and puts out a new song so he's literally writing a metallica song with a computer bot um i saw the the one that he did for acdc was kind of hilarious it was n not you know it was nonsensical at times and then other times it made a whole bunch of sense i think we lost frankie c here today um but uh it was it was entertaining to say the least like it was funny just to kind of see all the 
you know, the lyrics coming together and whatever it was. I was uh, Frank telling everybody about the ACDC one that I saw. So this is the Metallica. So question for you. Go ahead. Does he, he makes the music himself? He writes and, and performs the music himself? I believe he does. Yeah, I believe that's what he does. Because it says all cool. music, vocals, performed, mixed, and mastered by me in my kitchen on a couple of cheap guitars, a crappy mic, an old copy of Pro Tools. Why is he in his kitchen? I don't know. It's like the worst, I don't know, unless the acoustics are good. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. So I can't actually play this through the board um, because we'll get, a, uh, you know, we'll get a ping for it. But if I play it through my phone into the microphone, it should be fine. So uh, the song, now let me give you the song title and tell me you don't get a little excited about this because it actually, it's a, <laughs> it's a great title. Now. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, what's the, the title? The title of the song is Deliverance Rides. Deliverance Rides. That sounds like a Metallica it's song. Not bad. <laughs> yeah. It's not bad. That sounds like a Metallica song. All right, so I've not heard this yet. I've not okay, heard this yet. What do we got? Um, it's been up for two weeks. 246,000 views. Does this make you feel bad that any stupid kid in his kitchen can easily recreate a Metallica song and it sounds like exactly like Metallica? Well, it could recreate it. I mean, their songs are playable. It's not like they're not. You know. Probably can't be done for Dave. Matthews. That sounds like the, the background to that, the rhythm sounds like sad but true. A little faster. What's crazy is, and I'll show people here. He 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 puts it to. He puts it to like a real video too, so it looks like it's Metallica actually playing it. It's not bad. It's not quite up to the Metallica standard, but no, it's good for what no, it is. It of is course good. not. I kind of like how the the lyrics don't really make a whole bunch of sense. I think that's the fun part. They're just a mishmash of different lyrics from different songs, I guess. Yeah. But the weird thing is, though, and the same thing happened when I was listening to like the ACDC song that this kid did. It was because they're using old lyrics. It do, You do recognize some of the themes of the band, like riding alone and all, you know. Stuff yeah, that yeah. James constantly sings and writes about. You know what I mean? A lot of death in there. A lot of death. Yeah, well, it's Met Metallica. Yeah, Metallica, you got a lot of death, a lot of maniac kind of insane things. Like, your head's not right. There's a lot of insanity and death Yeah, is, is a big, those are two big themes, Metallica. Song. That's kind of all you need for a good old Metallica song. A little, a little more than that. Well, yeah. Those are the themes. Yeah. You need talent, too. I mean, I guess so. You need an unpixelated face. There we go. Um, <laughs> Twister 2 off. is trending on uh, uh, Twitter today because people just want to see a sequel to Twister. I don't... Where did that come from? I mean, I'm all for bringing back Helen Hunt into the spotlight. I thought yeah. she was great. I, th I still think she's great. Um, but it's going to be, it's hard to do. I don't know how this came up. Like if this is just a random Twitter rant that, that caught fire, I don't, is this, this isn't uh Hollywood gossip, right? This isn't a thing that's planned. Not from what I could see. I mean, I, I don't really see like a Hollywood reporter thing on this or anything, but just kind of like everybody just starting to talk about it and it kind of catches fire. You're missing two big characters in that movie. Philip Seymour Hoffman is dead, right? Yep. And Pullman. Or Paxton. Paxton. Bill Paxton. That's Paxton. right. Paxton. <laughs> I do confuse both of them, though. 
Yeah, main character, Bill Paxton. And yeah. then Philip Seymour Hoffman, comic relief. Those were two huge characters in that movie. And the, I mean, you're going to have to do a big a sequel with you know, new great characters. I don't know if they... I'm sure they could do it. I'm sure they write something good. They could have Paxton's and, character die in a twister. That'd be, that'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, with maybe with... Uh, his name was Dusty, I believe, in uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman's character. You know, maybe they were on. That's true. Could kill the both of them off in like a, a nasty twister. Like they were both together at the same time, kind of a thing. Yep. Go ahead, what were you saying? Yeah, that could happen. Um, no, I'm saying basically they could have them, you know, riding together and something happens, you know, with the two of them. I feel and like that's how the movie starts. There's a ton of movies that you always that were so great and you want a sequel to. I wouldn't put Twister or two on top of any of those lists. Looking at I that, I loved Twister. I, I that was in the ninety, I think ninety four, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure. Yeah, but um, you know, I, I grew up with that movie. That was a good movie. I, I mean, it wasn't you know there was a lot of unrealistic things in that movie, but it was a fun adventure kind of movie. I like they. I feel like that was like a dawning of a time too, where there was like a ton of like sound uh, technology, you know, dawning at that time. Like that was a big deal, and you know, laser discs. The effects and, were amazing. Yeah, yeah, and you, and you can't. It's hard to beat some of those effects like with the with the actual tornadoes and the the way they did it. It was a lot of practical stuff too. So. I love the ride too. I th was it in Universal Studios yes. in Florida? It was a great ride. Yeah, I don't know. Was it a ride? It, no, it was a more like a it was show. Like a tour. Yeah. For sure. Show. Yeah. yeah. That was pretty cool. It was really cool. It was really, a really tornado cool. tornado in the middle of the room and you're like 10 feet from it and it's like right there. It's whipping around. It was pretty cool. Yeah. And I always love those like where you're waiting in line and you're watching the little TVs and they're like setting it all up yeah. for you and everything. And. Yeah, that's awesome shit. But it's gone now, I think. That's what's weird about uh, Florida right now. Like, I, I, go ahead. Say it again. I was saying that's. I, I think Twister's gone. I don't know if the Twister thing is still there. They've like replaced everything. Probably. I mean, a movie that old, um, probably gone. What is that? Twenty, uh, twenty-five years old. That movie. Yeah. Well, twenty. Yeah, twenty-six years old. But that, that was a cool ride, and I can't imagine them keeping it around that long. But I like rides that when you're, like you said, if you're online, but the, like the real actors are talking to you and like preparing you like, it's not, like you're about to step into the real thing. Yeah, that was the best. I think they do it with Jurassic World or something, something Jurassic, where they have like Chris Pratt talking to you. Yeah, they do. That's pretty cool. I like that stuff. But it's all like, to me, Universal Studios will always be Twister, Back to the Future... You know, the that's gone. The King Kong thing. They're all gone. They're all gone. Jaws. Jaws. One of the best ones. Yeah. That was cool because they had the whole town. Yep. You know, mapped out. They had, you know, you walk through and you get like the bait shop and you get all these different things. And then you get to the, the dock and they, they take you around in the water and the freaking shark attacks. You. I don't know what they do with all that stuff. There's got, they have to have that stuff in like a museum or something. I would think so. I think the I think the town now is like uh, is Springfield. I think they turned it all into. Springfield. That's a good change. That's yeah. I mean, if they're going to change it into something, another iconic thing. Yeah, but I also if they change it into like Candyland or something. Well, that's kind of iconic too. But I also feel like just expand, like stop replacing rides. Just just build more, you know, and make the park bigger. Go bigger. Don't get rid of the old ride. Just build another just building. Just kick people out of their homes. Yeah, yeah. People really do. should be living near Universal <laughs> Studios anyway. That's bull. Yeah, Disney World should be just an endless. Like eventually, Florida should just be Disney World. Yeah, basically. Just every ride you can imagine from every movie. Just keep building it and building it. It's just a non. You'll never in your lifetime be able to get to every ride. That's what it should be. That's what it, that is what it should be. But I think Disney has room to expand, whereas Universal doesn't. But let's get back to the point of movies, like. There's a ton of movies that I would love to see a sequel to first. Like what do you got? The Big Lebowski. Like, give me a Big Lebowski sequel. Now, we kind of got this John Turturro thing that he's doing where he plays his character and he kind of 
Like he he was oh, like yeah. a minor character in that. Not John Turturro. Was it John Turturro? Anyway, he they they wrote a whole what? movie around his character. His little, he plays a character Jesus. He's in it for like three seconds. They wrote a whole movie off of that. But I want to see the dude. Like I want to see that keep going. You know. Yeah, but something like that. I mean, can you ever have a sequel that will live up to it? I mean, it's it's gonna be. That's true. That's a class. That's one of those standalone classic movies. Like, um, I don't know. You pick any movie that's just like a like it's a cult classic, and to do a sequel like Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. To do a sequel to that. I don't know if it cheapens the original, but it, it doesn't do anything to the original. But but I feel like there are some that you like if, if as long as all the principal players are involved, the producers and the excuse me, resume tight. Thank you, uh, the actors and the directors. I think you could like Swingers is another one. Like I would love, I would love the Vince. story's over though. What are you gonna say? You just want to see those characters. Again. I just want to see those characters again and again. Like we've seen Vince Vaughn and uh, John Favreau play those because those characters are basically kind of themselves play versions of those characters because they're playing themselves in other movies. Right. Like they were great in uh, what was that honeymoon movie that they did that that they go away. Couples retreat. They were great in couples retreat. That's right. I I forgot they did another movie like that together yeah and it was kind of like you know when they were in the spa and they were having that moment they were talking about going to the with the bench or something i forget what they were i don't remember i have to see that one again i I don't remember that one too much yeah it was something like if going to the bench was cheating or something like that you know in your mind um i feel like their characters switched though john favreau was more of the yes like the the swinger guy you know Yes, yeah, he was the more like loose cannon, whereas Fav- uh, Vaughn was the straight edge. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to make sequels to classic movies like that. I mean, you can do it, but you'll never achieve the greatness of the original. Like, no, there are very few sequels, just you know, sequels in general to a- any movie that are better than the original. Well, Terminator Two, Terminator Two, definitely. I feel honestly. like most people didn't. I don't even remember watching Terminator. To be honest with you. It was, it was good. I mean, Schwarzenegger was the bad guy. By the way, another great ride in Universal that is now gone. The, they're just wiping it out, baby. Sucks. Gotta now make way for the new ones. The Born Identity, I think, or something. The Born Ultimatum is going to be the new show in there, or whatever it is. Yeah. Sucks. How is that more popular than Terminator? I don't know. That Terminator was classic. It was a really classic. You can't beat Terminator. What else? What else was the sequel? Was any of the Star Wars movies like the sequels better than the original one? There are debates with that. I feel like the original is the classic one, but then a lot of people go, "Oh, what's your favorite?" A lot of people say Empire Strikes Back, which is the second one. Yeah, from I'll, the original three. A lot of people say that they love Godfather two more than Godfather one. I don't. I don't agree with that. Mm. Yeah, I don't agree to that either. I, I think they're both fantastic. I, I think they're both great. I love watching both. I like three, though, too. Nobody likes three. I love three. You're in the minority, but still. Yeah, I still think three is great. Yeah, no, a lot of... Let's see. I try to think of a, a sequel that's better than the original. It's hard to do. There's not many. Shrek 2? No. <laughs> People love that Shrek 2. <laughs> did you see that kid the other day that did Shrek 2 what do you mean um, this kid just decided that he was going to to reenact Shrek 2 on his YouTube channel to raise no. money for something I, you know one of the causes going on right now and he literally okay. it was like it was so great because it was like ev- how every live stream on YouTube starts which is like they look into the camera and they're like is this, can you guys hear me? Can you hear me in the chat? Am I, are we streaming? I think we're streaming. Okay. Can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. Like it was the same, you know, that classic like YouTube streaming start. And then he, in the most awful, worst, this, this, this God bless this kid. He's such a talentless kid. 
But he was out there trying and doing all the voices that sounded nothing like the original. And he just did, for an hour and a half, read the entire script. Oh, my script. God. <laughs> Poor kid. Hey, you know what? You got nothing to do. You, you flex your uh, entertainment uh, muscles, I guess. You got to do something. Look at us. Like What we're doing is any better. <laughs> Yeah, it really isn't any better. But you know what I love that he did too? He would, li the only way I knew, his voices were so bad, the only way I knew who the characters were was he would turn his head when he switched the character. <laughs> <laughs> He's a step above uh, what we're doing. We don't even move our heads. But another, let's see, The Dark Knight. Oh, yes. That's Ooh. better than the original. The original was really good. But Dark Knight is the better one. I did not love the original uh, Batman. I got to be honest with you. I it was really? okay. His origin, the whole thing, though. Yeah. I mean, the the the, the bad guy could have been a little better than the Scarecrow, but other than that, and and Ra's al Ghul, that was pretty cool. I remember watching it. Everybody making a big deal out of it and going, "Yeah, okay, it was all right," you know. But I, I will oh, modern Batman. That was good. But I think that I think that I actually almost even hated it more once two came out. Two was so damn good. Two should have been up for best picture. I don't know why it wasn't. It really should have been. That's one of those things where the Academy was like dragging ass, uh, not getting it right. I have I found a are list you? from the film school yeah. projects of seek twenty five movie sequels that are better than the original. You want to hear these? Go for it. Paddington 2. I mean, I almost don't even want to go. Never saw either of them. Yeah, read the rest of the thing if that's what they're starting with. Paddington 2. Right <laughs> um, out of the gate. X2, X-Men United in 2003. Uh, I mean, I put them on the same level, the first one and the second one. They were, first one was really good. Mad like, Max 2 in 1981. You know, I never saw the Mad Max movies. Me, like, neither I. Like, I vaguely remember seeing them. I have no desire to go see them. Uh, Hellboy 2 in 2008. Hellboy 2 was really good. Hellboy 2 was really good. Uh, go ahead, say it again. Hellboy 2 is really good. I like the original better. Those are the Ron Perlman ones. And the original had David Hyde Pierce's voice. Uh, as opposed to they, they replaced his voice in the second one. I like the first one better. Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Uh, That's an argument. To I like Captain America better. I did like the origin for Captain America, too, uh, for Captain America, the original one, but uh, the first Avenger. I thought that was good. Yeah. Uh, Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead. No, I like Night of the Living Dead. Right? Um, that was the first one. Yeah, Night of the Living Dead was the first one. Shrek 2 is listed here as number 19. The Adams. Yes. Adam's Family Values. I mean, I'll mind. give you that one. I think so. I agree with that. Uh, over Adam's Family? I think uh, Adam's Family Values. Was Adam's oh, Family Values with Christopher Lloyd where he gets married? He gets... They're both with Christopher Lloyd. But Christopher Lloyd, yeah, he gets married in this one. And uh, the Adams, they have a new kid. Right. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. The kids go to camp. You know, the whole thing. <laughs> uh, the, the only thing was that in the first one, they could have had... It was focused around Fester, but he wasn't like Fester, Fester. He was like an imposter at the beginning, and then he was Fester. You know, right. it's like he wasn't ingrained as Fester in the first one. He was ingrained as Fester in the second one. Right, but then he finds he gets married, and he throws he winds up throwing them all out of the house, kind of a thing. Right. Yeah, those were good movies. He's after their money. Or now that I think yeah. about it, <laughs> okay. The camp counselor in that movie is also the same guy in Ghostbusters that was the art, yes, right. Yes, in Ghostbusters too. Yeah, is I Vigo. forget his real name, but yeah, yeah. What is his real name? Where is that guy? He's in uh, what's the TV show with the the one who cut her hair, Felicity. He's on a TV show. He was in that. Let's see. All right, Frank's getting his name. Uh, number seventeen here on this list: Toy Story Two. They start to, no, but the original was better. I Definitely. love all of them equally. I got to be honest with you. There's oh, they're a... both. They're all great. All four of them. Yeah. But uh, I don't think the second was better. 
Clover, 10 Cloverfield Lane was a sequel to Cloverfield. I didn't see any of those. I'm not a horror guy. Cloverfield Lane was really good, but the first one may be better. Peter McNichol, by the way. That's his name, Peter McNichol? Yeah. I feel like we should start a Peter McNichol fan club. Get, get in line, buddy. I just feel like Peter McNichol is not getting the attention and popularity that he should be. He's underrated. I think he was on uh, Veep, too, for a while. Was he? Here and there. Maybe. What other movies you got? God, he's just fantastic. I, I just, I'm such a, I just want to give money. He probably doesn't need money, but I just want to give money to Peter McNichol. Yeah. I'm sure Peter McNichol's doing just fine. Yeah, he is doing just fine. But I just, I love him. I love him. At, whenever Peter McNichol comes onto screen, I'm instantly more happy. I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. Like, this guy. Like, Man. This guy. No? Am I alone on that? He's great. He's, you know, but I don't know how crazy you're going over him. I'm going a little too crazy. Yeah, that's, for, that's Peter McNichol right there. He's awesome. That's the guy. Yeah. He is great. He is Vigo. He's just so, like, he, like, he, come on. Like, anybody else in that role would not have been as good in that Ghostbusters no, role. He was great. Phenomenal in that. He's very, qu- very quotable. Uh, number 15, A Shot in the Dark, a sequel to The Pink Panther. Eh. No idea. <laughs> Magic Mike XXL over Magic Mike. Thoughts, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> Did you get roped Never into seeing these phone. movies with like a girl? <laughs> Wait, this was, this was 2012. I don't, I don't know. Were you with your wife at this time? Did you get roped into seeing Magic Mike? I didn't, never saw either of them. Yeah, neither did I. No. And I wouldn't be subjected. She wouldn't do that to me. Superman 2 over the original Ooh. Superman in 1978. That's a possibility. Actually, this is cheating. This says Superman 2, the Richard Donner cut. I don't know if I've seen that. Oh, I don't know that either. It was released in 2006. I'll have to go back and look at that. I don't know. What about the Rockies? Many sequels. I love Rocky 4. I'd probably like I probably like Rocky Four the best out of all of them. I feel like everybody in our age group though loves Rocky Four, and the only reason why is because that was the Rocky that came out when we were like watching, starting to watch movies. I don't think so. I mean, because I, I feel so. like a lot of the first one was his relationship with Adrian, the courtship, the he loses. You know, it's like it was a little uh, not as much boxing as there. It was great, great movie, and a great first movie. But uh, with Rocky IV, there was revenge. There was Russia versus the U.S. There was, you know, this unbeatable uh, titan of a guy fighting the underdog again. You know, it was Apollo was huge and great, but Drago was like double his size. He, he kills Apollo. Oh, no. You know, yeah. spoiler alert. You but, really um, you got to get better at that. I don't know how to do spoiler <laughs> alert. <laughs> Oh, you say spoil alert before you spoil it. Yeah, you always I got say you. it right after. <laughs> Maybe you could put some kind of graphic that says spoiler alert before I start talking. You're awful at spoiler alerts. <laughs> All right. If you're any good at editing, a little spoiler alert thing will go right here. Yeah. I'm phenomenal at editing. I'm not going to do fill it to save you. <laughs> fill in the blank. No? All right. <laughs> Damn it. I feel like Rocky Four though. You had time. I yeah yes okay we, okay the 80s. but but I but again I feel like again there was Russia America heat at the time that was like the big topic the movie comes out yeah, that's not like why I was into it I didn't care you know I was a kid I didn't care about the Russia America even know, we didn't even get it I didn't even understand no, that part no of it. idea what was going on yeah but I just thought I just like the you know the battle and the the revenge and the whole thing and it was good. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, again, it goes I, to Russia to train. It's my favorite. I also like the Tommy Gunn one too. I like. Was that five? Uh, yeah, that's probably the bottom. That's yeah, the fifth one. And I love the last place. I love that one. Um, this one. this is a great one. I so I don't know, but so but Rocky two. Would you put Rocky two over one? I feel like no. the the brilliance of there's a brilliance of Rocky one. Spoiler alert. Brilliance of Rocky One. Seventies, dude. Come on. He doesn't. He doesn't win. Like that was. That was what was so brilliant about it. Yeah, it came close though. 
It's that underdog story where he fails. I mean, it's great. Um, yeah, this, no, the whole series. It's a good arc. This one is dead on balls accurate, to quote Marissa Tomei. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Better than Better regular than, vacation? Yeah. Yeah, because I could watch Christmas Vacation anytime, and it's still great. Yeah, everything. You got to be really in the mood for vacation. Uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, better than Rise of the Planet of the Apes, 2011, 2014. I, I'm confused with which one's which, and I, I forget. I haven't seen the third one. I saw the first two. I don't know. Lethal Weapon 2, like better than Lethal Weapon the original? No, I don't think so. I think the original was better. I still like, was that four with Chris Rock? Four was with Chris Rock, yeah. That, that was the best one for me. That was. When that came out, remember my Chris Rock, I met him story? That was around the time that I met him. When was that it? Came out. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, Frank has a great I met Chris Rock story in a past podcast. Um, we can go back a couple episodes. Bride of Frankenstein, better than Frankenstein? Talk about the 1930s. Don't know, probably yeah. not. Yeah. Original Evil Frankenstein, you know. Evil Dead 2, better than Evil Dead. Never saw either of them. That's another cult classic that... Uh, I think they're making a new one. Of Evil Dead? Mm -hmm. uh, Star Trek 2, The Wrath of Khan, better than Star Trek. Never saw them. I feel like I Never heard... I wasn't a big Star Trek guy. Yeah. I feel like I heard a lot of people say that. Um, Spider-Man 2, better than Spider-Man. This is the originals. 2000, not the originals, but going the back Toby, to... Tobey Maguire? Yeah, the original Tobey Maguire's. Uh, no, I like the original when he becomes Spider-Man. Yeah. See, a lot of these are origins, and... Those are compelling, you know. And the second and third ones, they're established and they're just fighting the, the villain. Uh, number four on this list, better sequels than the originals. Godfather Part 2, better than Godfather 1. We talked about that. Oh, there you go. Uh, That's up for debate. Number three is The Dark Knight over Batman Begins. Very accurate. Very curious to see what these next two are. Uh, number two is... What was it? Number three was what? Number three you. was uh, Batman and The Dark Knight. Oh, the Batman ones. Okay. Uh, number two, Star Wars Episode Five, Empire Strikes Back. Uh, like you said, Empire Strikes Back. And a new hope. I don't know, man. I mean, better. You know what's weird? That that is the first time you hear, you know, the Darth Vader theme. Mm -hmm. you, the, there's, the that Imperial... theme doesn't come out in the until the second one, until Empire Strikes Back. The Imperial it's not March? played in the original. Is the Imperial it's March. It's not played in the original Star Wars. I did not know that. Isn't it also, doesn't he not say, I am your father? He says, I am your father. He doesn't say, Luke, I am your father. That's it. Yeah, that's it. He says, no, I am your father. That's right. He never says, Luke, I'm your father. Which I blame Tommy Boy for that, yep. that whole thing. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that didn't help. That set it back a little while. Yeah. That's also like in Jaws. It's not, we're going to need a bigger boat. It's, you're going to need it's a bigger gonna boat. Need but everybody says yeah. we're going to need a bigger boat. Uh, and number one on this list is Terminator 2, better than uh, the original, which we had. So we were, weren't far off on that. Pretty good. So Terminator 2, better than Terminator 1. That's it. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. But if they come out with a twist or two, I could see it happening. You got to have a Helen Hunt. And... I'm sure they can get most of the uh, the cast, the original cast, back. Yeah, what's that uh, other guy from Ferris Bueller's Day Off doing? He's, you know, right. They could probably get him. I'd like to get him in Twister too with the with the Red Wings jersey. That'd be the best. Yeah. Now is the time when, like, when he flips out or loses his mind. I forget what he says. Yeah. Um, but that, yeah, you can get him probably. There's a couple other guys in there that. You should probably be able to get the guy that was in jury duty. Forget his name. The the Steve Buscemi, the you know Steve Buscemi lookalike guy. I'd like to get Peter get McNichol in Twister too. I think that would be the best. <laughs> Beautiful with there. I think. What if we do an origin like when they were younger, and you get like a young Carrie Elwes versus a young uh, Helen Hunt and and. Bill Paxton's character. That would be interesting. Although, although a prequel. I, 
I feel like it's a sequel kind of because wasn't Helen Hunt and hit and Paxton weren't they romantically linked? Like didn't they hook up? Yes. At the yeah, end, but we came in as they were get, as they were in the middle of a divorce. Carrie Elwes's character was already they broke apart from them. Is you know, that they were partners? Oh, so they were partners and married, got divorced, and then got back together. By the end of the yeah, the spoiler alert. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't remember. <laughs> Because I don't remember yeah, so the they, I don't remember the plot all that much. Yeah, so uh, Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt, at the beginning of the movie, were getting divorced. That's why he goes out to see her to get divorce papers signed, and it gets caught up in the whole thing. And Carrie Elwes's character is sort of the bad guy, right? Uh, he's like the the guy who steals their idea, and used to be their partner. But... Right. He okay. Uh, he used to, you're, you're, you're cutting in and out. He used to be their partner. But then he split off from them and started to do his own thing, but stole Bill Paxton's idea for tracking tornadoes. Right. Like if they did an origin of that, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, but see, I, I think it's easier now because you could, you could just do, they got back together, they were married, and then he went off to chase a tornado and died, and now she's got to deal with the fallout of that decision. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I could write this in 45 minutes. I honestly. <laughs> That's your assignment. Do it. I've and never. We'll act it out like that kid did. We'll act it out tomorrow. <laughs> I've never written a movie in my life. I feel like I could write Twister 2 in 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to have a ton of characters. You got to write for, uh, you know, you got to write action sequences. It's so easy. Helen Hunt's sad. Bill Paxton died. A tornado's coming. Run from tornado for the next hour and a half. <laughs> Lots of special you effects. Gotta, the end. You gotta have some kind of <laughs> plot, though. There's gotta be a story. Yeah, just well, be she's sad. I'll tell you what you do. You bring in a kid, right? That's an easy one. Oh, there you go. See? They got back together, she's had a like, kid. Yeah. And now 20, he's, he's 20 years old. He blames her for dad's death, and he's gonna go out and do the same thing, make the same mistakes, that kind of thing. Man, Hollywood needs to, to come up with some new sh stuff. I'm, I'm gonna say Maybe something. they got a dog together and the dog blames them for stuff. The I don't know. There's Give me dog. something different. Yeah, a dog who flies. I, honestly, right now, I think I could write it in 30 minutes. I think I just knocked off 15 minutes from the whole... That's the, that's the opening. You got at least 15 minutes done. Yeah, super easy. I think What's-Her-Name's even alive, too. Um, the, the, the ant that they go visit in the middle of the movie. Uh, I don't really remember that. I can go back and watch Twister now. It's, it's an underrated movie. I feel like that's a movie that you got to watch with surround sound, though. You can't just watch that on an old oh, yeah. TV set. You, you got to have that wind noise all around you. Yeah. The crack. It's, it's cool because you watch. You have like the cracking of the trees and stuff. It's all around you. They're driving through a house at one point for some reason. Uh, you know, they got exploding trucks. The flying cow. Explode. Don't you want to see the, the flying, flying cow, cow again? <laughs> Shit, I want a Twister too. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop on Twitter now and be like, we should definitely have a Twister too. What? I said it's just an underrated effect movie. Yeah, you know the the way they did that, like with the the cars moving and stuff, dropping them out of the sky. It was it was decent in '94. I mean, that's it was ahead of its time. I think. Yeah, they see she CGI the shit out of that now. It'd be so much better. Maybe, unless they Sharknado it. Oh, let's hope not. Sharknado. Yeah. So stupid. <laughs> okay. I've never seen a Sharknado. I'm never going. To. Nor have I. I have no desire. Ugh, I hated that time. That was a, <laughs> that was a tough time in this country. Whatever. I was like, you see the Sharknado? Oh, Sharknado. You know what's weird? I, st I started watching the first Sharknado, and I don't think anything Shark or Nado related happens in the first like half hour. Yeah. And then, so and then the people... Like, I'm out. Here's what I really can't stand. The people that go, no, you don't understand. It's supposed to be cheesy. No, yeah, I know it's supposed to be fucking cheesy, yeah. asshole. How I do I not it. understand that? Fucking kill it. I can't. I, no, it's you don't get it. It's supposed to be like, no, no, I understand. Fucking right. waste of my life. Stupid shit. I, know. Man. I already did. I already did Tiger King. That's it. I can't. I so, can't give any more to these stupid things. We got to go and write our Twister sequel. Yeah. I don't We're know out. why I'm including myself on it. We're out. Can you uh, put me down as like uh, EP on that? You got it, buddy. You got it. 
I can't not. They'll have this episode. I'll y'all get sued. I'll lose. I might as well just easier to just put you on there from the beginning. Thank you. All right, that's the episode. I hope you enjoyed. Rate and review on Apple uh, Podcasts. Uh, like and subscribe on YouTube, Facebook as well. AnthonyOnAir.com has all the info. We'll see you on the next episode.